Welcome to Recombu, I'm Basil, this is the Huawei SNP2, you're watching a first impressions video, so here are our first impressions. We're going to start off by talking about the design. Physically 8.4mm thinness, tapered top and bottom, tapered sides, it looks rather nice. The back is plastic, it is a plastic phone, it's not going to be as premium as the HTC One or anything like that. But in the same breath, you're still going to get a very, very decent product for the money you pay. On the front, you've got 4.7 inch 720p panel. Really quite nice IPS display. Um, as it focuses, you'll see details very nice and sharp. Videos should look fantastic as will photos. Above it, you've got a front facing camera. Down below are three capacitive buttons. On the right hand side, you've got a power button, a micro SIM slot, and a two stage camera button. On the uh, left side, you've got a volume rocker. At the base, in core microphone up at the top, 3.5mm jack and a micro USB port, while on the reverse is that 13 megapixel camera and a flash, as well as a Huawei insignia and loudspeaker. All in all, the design gets a thumbs up. We have heard that the final release version will have a matte plastic backing rather than this uh, quite hard plastic shell we've got on here. But it's definitely not a deal breaker, even if it doesn't. Um, nowhere near the premium iPhone HTC One levels we might hope for in a device, but it's not a flagship. It's a very, very capable mid-ranger. Looking inside the screen, you've got Huawei's Emotion UI on top of Android 4.1. It isn't the latest version of Android, but you're not really going to notice because Huawei has skinned this thing so heavily. Well, that means shortcuts, widgets, folders. Pretty much that is the entirety of the user interface. Oh, and we forgot themes. You can change the look and feel of the Huawei SNP2 really, really heavily. Take this origami theme, for example. If we apply it, we can see everything in a few moments just completely change. Um, if we jump back through to the home screen, then you can see all the icons look like little origami elements and um, all the shortcuts have also been redrawn for internet, etc. It's very, very charming um, on first impression. We're not entirely sure we love it as a concept overall, kind of fragments Android, but for customizability, it's pretty, pretty cool. And the Huawei SMP2 seems to cope very well with it, thanks to its processor, 1.5 gig quad core Huawei K3V2 processor. Anyway, moving back to inside the phone, um, and as we said, you've got folders, you've got shortcuts, and you've got widgets in the notifications bar. You've also got some quick settings that Huawei has included, and access, obviously, to your standard settings. The 13 megapixel camera around the back comes with Huawei's uh, user interface, which is very similar to the one we've seen um, on past Huawei devices. So you've got a panel that you can pull in for special effects, etc. You can apply filters, you can throw in a few effects. These are kind of ice cream sandwich-esque effects which deform faces. And let's scroll that in. You can also, there you go, access settings. It's got a front-facing camera as well as we saw. Last time we tried to access a front-facing camera, it crashed. We will report stability, but you have got um, in our review, so keep an eye on that, but we're not gonna try it now. HDR mode is on there. You've got low light, you've got group shots. So it's just really, really nice, complete camera experience taking advantage of that 13 megapixel sensor. We will again report back on the performance in our full review. As far as other internals go, 16 gigabytes of internal memory. It's non-expandable. Um, we're not sure how much of that's user available, so we can hop into the settings to find out. You can see Huawei's customized the settings, so it's a little bit less daunting if we jump into storage. That's pretty, pretty good. Um, well, actually, not so good. 16 gigabyte total, 11.83 user available. Um, so that's pretty, all you're going to really have to work with. That should be mo enough for most people. What's really exciting about the Huawei SMP2, though, is its connectivity. It's got ca Category 4 LTE. So that's the fastest LTE on the market. Not available yet in the UK. It does kind of future-proof future -proof you um, if you did indeed opt for this phone. As we said, available on 3 for £23 a month. 3 will be getting a rollout of 4G and giving it for free to every one of their customers um, as a free upgrade. We're not sure how long that'll last, but if you do get the Ascend P213, you will be very, very well catered for. And right now you can take advantage of the DCHSPA that they've got on offer at the moment. If none of that made any sense, what we're trying to say is this is a very fast, speedy browsing phone, and it's also performing quite well in our initial uh, review. 
If you want to check out our full review, make sure you swing by recombo.com in about a week's time. Thanks for watching. I've been Basil. This has been the Huawei Ascend P2. If you've got any questions about the phone, please fire us a comment below. Hope you like this video. If you have, click like. And if you like our channel, just click subscribe.